Hey browser hackers, welcome to Plasma demo number 43. Uh, it's been a busy week. Stefan is not with us today, unfortunately, due to medical issue. Hopefully he'll be back with us by next week. So yeah, let's go right back right into the demo day. Today we have an announcement. Uh, we have the selector API in private beta. It's been, uh, we've been working on this feature for a while and we are starting to testing it on, on our own extension. And we, we actually have a demo at the end of this, uh, at the end of this uh, video. So stay tuned. And to, the, to, those, to those who don't know, Selector API is uh, an API from Plasma that allows you to is a replacement for the query Selector API on the browser, which allow you to monitor and check if your selector ever return null. And that's pretty much the, uh, the basic feature of it. It will send you, basically, when your selector is invalid, it will send you an email. Uh, coming up next, we have uh, a bunch of uh, framework fix. We have the multiple browser instance CS reload fix. So previously, if you have multiple browser windows open, content script will only reload on the very first active window. But you have a bunch of them, uh, and your content script happened to be on a window that is not the first active window, it will not reload. So this fix, um, resolve that problem. It also fixed another issue that was contributed by um, a contributor, uh, which uh, removed the conflict between the hidden class name on the loading indicator in the, uh, uh, in, in the uh, injected loading indicator. The second fix we have is the resolver fix. This one, mm, so this one is this one has a history with how we was handling ESM module. And um, basically the fix was we, um, we, we handling the relative importing path using parcel. And we basically is handling that to use the parcel native resolve for, for, for relative import path. And with that, our packages that use relative import paths, such as uh, and design, should now work properly. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of README translation, thanks to all of the contributors. We have Indonesians from uh, Ang Gung We have Russian README uh, translation from T. Feimasi. And we have Turkish README, README translation from AG. Act M, okay, A G M M N N. Uh, a lot of these are, you know, like hacker usernames, so I should probably spell them out instead of actually trying to pronounce them here. But thank you all so much uh, for the Rimi translation. Really, really helpful for the community in general. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much the uh, update on the framework side. Now, going to the demo, let's go and see how this like, API might look like. So right now, if I go to one of my uh, selector API page here, we have the uh, we have the selector page that belong under an extension that I uploaded to Eero, our staging our staging environment, and with the selector monitor, you can generate an a monitor ID, and with the monitor ID, you can now embed that in your extension using the code. In using the installation instruction below, so with the Plasma framework, you can basically add this ID as an environment variable and initializing the uh, selector uh, API with that environment variable. And then, whenever you want to query um, some kind of element on, on a website, you would use the query selector function from the Plasma HQ selector library instead of using the document.query selector, the uh, manual one. And with that, you're done, that's it. Now, every time that this selector doesn't work, it will, it will send email to this uh, 
to this email here that you put in. And and this is kind of like the example of how the email might look like. So let, right now I actually have a I have an extension that actually querying a a sample kind of a query a sample um selector on platform.com and just let me use this email. I'm using a, a plus temper email here. Notify that. Also, let's just issue a new. Oh, never mind. I already. This is a new ID. Uh, but yeah. So now, when I go to a new page, and so here I'm querying a selector that doesn't exist in on this page. And now, if I were to just wait for a bit. Um, so the production deployment of the Selector API would actually use a daily cron job, so you would, we would not have you would not be spam a lot. You likely once a day, if your extension being used very extensively, and that should help, hopefully help you catch bug and deploy a new version quickly. And so uh, we should have a new email here. Yep, that should be the email. And this, that should be the selector. Yep. So this is the email that you receive if your selector stops working. Yeah. And you will have a table with the selector, the URL, and the last error. That's the last the data is last error. Yeah. So that's pretty much the current feature. If you have any feedback, please let us know. Uh, we are on Discord and also on email uh, and Slack as well. Yeah, that is pretty much it. Mm. All right, thanks for tuning in and uh, thank you all to our customer, our sponsor, and our users. And uh, we will be back next week for another demo day. Bye bye.